guys, it's May May and my trusty sidekick. Oh, Vinny's here. And happy Easter, everyone. Amen. Happy Easter. It's a, it's a, it's, I don't know if it's a beautiful day yet. I heard we're supposed to have rain. We're filming early. But I heard we're supposed to have rain on Easter Sunday. Maybe I hope we not. Won't. I hope not. But we want to welcome you in. What a perfect day to continue our series that we have been doing on things we can't lose our conviction over because today's topic is evangelism. And it's perfect for Easter Sunday because guess what? What we share with folks is the good news. That's right. It's so important to realize that in this day and time, the most important thing we can do is share good news. Mm -hmm. Good news of Jesus Christ, the good news that someone loved us so much that they were willing to sacrifice their only son that he might make his blood would be the payment for our sin and that we could have eternity with him as a result of that. Mm -hmm. And today we celebrate his resurrection. It's it is the most, it's, let's see, there's two really big events in the Christian life. That's Easter and Christmas. Those are the, our, well, there's three <clears throat> and also your salvation, right? Your day right. of salvation. But, um, Easter is always such a beautiful time. The you know the spring, the new life that we see outside. You know we're coming out of the winter blahs, and here comes Easter, the reminder of the resurrection with the dogwoods blooming and the azaleas mm. blooming, and everybody feeling the bloom because I'm feeling the bloom. <laughs> Look, are you feeling the yeah. bloom? <laughs> but it's a beautiful time, and I'm reminded of um, Paul in Ephesians discussed being a steward of the gospel, and um, when we were doing a study on Ephesians um, probably a year ago now, I remember learning that that meant being a manager of the gospel, meaning mm -hmm. this, you know the gospel, or, or, you, or I hope that you know the gospel. The gospel is the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's much more detailed than that, but if we were to break it down today, that's the gospel. And we find that in? <laughs> <laughs> 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 through 4. There you go. Very right. good. Brother T will be proud. <laughs> He'll be so proud. Um, but that is the gospel of Jesus Christ. And Paul was a manager of the gospel. If you've done any study on Paul's life, everywhere he went, his job was to spread the gospel. Um, and considering where he came from, you know, what an amazing, what an amazing thing. You know, we're, we're taught in Matthew chapter 28 verses 18 through 20, which we're going to talk about in just a second. We are taught the great commission, which is basically our charge. Our mandate. As, as Christians. Right. What, what Jesus left us with, with all authority, he left us with this position and that is to share the gospel. And, um, I've had people say like on this channel, I'll say this to you, this happened not too long ago. We, um, and it, and it, I, it's so interesting how this happens. So I get comments on our channel. We get comments. I'm used to comments. We get so we get comments about everything. If if the ugh, we get comments about everything. We do. Well, last week or two no, two weeks ago, we put up um our regular Sunday video like we always do. And someone commented, what is happening here? Someone commented, um, <laughs> sorry, I saw something sticking out of my head. Someone commented, I thought this was a craft channel. I don't come from here for this religious junk. Well, I'm used to that. So I just delete those comments. I usually block that person from yeah. commenting, not from seeing stuff, but from commenting. But my mother saw it. Mm. And she didn't she didn't usually see it because she doesn't usually read the comments. But that, I guess because she's had some time or whatever, she saw it. And she called me. She was like, I'm so sorry about that comment. I hadn't even seen it yet. I was like, what yeah. comment? And she told me. And I said, Mama, here's what I want you to know. That comment tells me that what I'm doing is working. Yeah. Because whether they wanted the religious junk or not, at least there was some sort of seed planted, yeah. right? And it's hard for us to think of those things as planting seeds when, when, like, that person who saw my video will always know I'm a Christian. Yeah. They will always know, oh, that's, they may go, oh, that's that crazy fanatic. I'm not a fanatic. I don't believe, well, I am. I'm fanatic about Jesus, but I don't throw that in, in anyone's face. We right. do these shows you know, Sundays at noon, this is not, you know, we don't, I never, this channel was never, a. this channel was built for crafting. That's right. But when you have a platform of any kind, you should consider how you can fulfill the Great Commission. Do you agree with that? A hundred percent. I mean, talk about, um, I'm going to throw this over to you without you realizing what's happening. But oh, wow. Talk about your platform. 
you know how yours might be different, how people's are different, and how we can use our our what our audience, how we can use the expansion of our territory yeah. for sharing the gospel. Well, I know for us, at one point in time, you you came to the decision or you asked God to help you understand how you could use this platform mm -hmm. to minister to people. And I can remember very early on, people would write you and say things or send you, you know, comments and stuff. And you would always go, it's just crafting. Yeah. I don't understand this. How is it impacting so many people's lives? It's just crafting. And it wouldn't be from necessarily Sunday videos. Like for no? example, our Sunday videos get very few views. Right. You know what I'm saying? Compared to what crafting videos get. You know, if a Sunday video video gets 2,000 views, I'm happy with that. We've done well. Yeah. And um, it it used to be, before we even started doing our Sunday videos, that people would contact me and go, I just feel like you're a Christian. I just feel like they would say that to me. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I am. I guess I say things or talk in that way. Yeah. But um, that's my that's my territory. But, you know, let's talk about you. What's you? I mean, not this platform. You're not, you're not, a, you are a YouTuber by default. <laughs> You've been forced to be well, a YouTuber. I didn't choose my, my life. It chose me. <laughs> but outside That's the bar of Joe's this, phrase. not your, <clears throat> it's kind of, you're kind of, un, you're kind of an unfair example because you are a worship leader. Like you're a minister of the gospel. Yeah. So that's kind of unfair because you have that platform. But outside of church and outside of this, what's your platform? Well, I mean, everything that you do points people in one direction or the other. I mean, you have a testimony in the way you carry yourself, the things you say to people, the way you treat people. Mm -hmm. I mean, so we all have a platform. I mean, every time we go to Walmart, well, not so much right now because we just <laughs> use the drive through. That's not, but, but even but there, still, even there, I try to be encouraging. We have the mm -hmm. opportunity to encourage people and to be kind to people mm -hmm. that are literally on the front line. I mean, I don't know how any other way to say it. So it's important that we be kind. We talked about uh, that being one of the fruits of the spirit last week. Right. Being kind to somebody, being mm -hmm. being uh, compassionate towards somebody, loving towards somebody. We all have a platform, no matter where we are, just in the way we treat other people. We may think too, based on our circumstances or our situation, maybe where we live or how we live or whatever we think, oh, I don't ever get to talk to anybody or tell anybody anything, but that's not true. You, even, even your family, my mom shared a story, um, with me where she spoke with a lady, um, during this pandemic that's going on, she was speaking with somebody and the lady said that she had a family member that was really, really scared. Um, I think it's okay to share this. I'm not sharing anything personal, but, um, the lady was, her family member was really, really scared. And, she knows that her family member is, is not living a life for Christ, that she's living a, um, a non-repentant life and, and possibly not saved. I don't know about that. I don't know if she, about her salvation because that wasn't discussed. But mom said that the lady told her, she said, this pandemic, you're worried about this pandemic? She's like, here's, and the lady didn't say, I don't know if, what the lady said to her family member, but to my mother, she said, I got family members who are going to die and go to hell and they're worried about this pandemic? Like this gonna go away. Yeah, this too shall pass. But eternal, eternity, eternity is eternity. Is eternal. It's forever. <laughs> and she's like, and I and I think I just have to tell them, look, this is gonna go away, but your mm -hmm. your soul is important. And we have to remember that with every person we run mm -hmm. into. You know, we've talked about we give illustrations, you know, if the bridge you drove up to was out, what would you do to you do everything you could to stop the people mm -hmm. behind you so they didn't fall off in the in the creek or river or lake or whatever body of water that the bridge is over. And the same thing is true when it comes to our salvation. Mm -hmm. The scripture in Matthew 28, 19 and 20 is a command for us from Jesus. One of the last things that he said to his disciples and before to you, us. Before you read it, I want to let everyone know it's, it is called the great commission. You know, we put that title on it. And um, so if you ever heard someone say the great commission, Vince is going to read you the scriptures that it comes from. Um, some people go 18 through 20 because Jesus starts to speak there with, he says all authority in, in 18. So Vince is going to read that for you. All right. So starting in verse 18 and Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. So 
he reminded them who he was. He is God in the flesh. He is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. He is the second person in the Trinity. He has all authority in heaven and on earth. So what he's saying here is coming from a position of strength, you know, and he wants them to understand who he is. You know, anytime we hear someone speak, whether it's our president or one of our governors or whoever, they speak from a position of authority Mm -hmm. and they, we need to listen to what they say and we need to respect what they say. And Jesus is trying to get his disciples attention here. And then he goes on in verse 19 and says, go thee therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the Holy spirit. So the first thing he wants us to do is go and to teach them, to tell them about what he did for them, what his sacrifice he made for them, tell them that. And then once they accept that to, for them to be baptized and Then he goes on to tell us what we should do after that. In verse 20, he says, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always, even unto the end of the earth. So when we look at this passage of scripture, it's pretty clear what he wants us to do. We can't forget how important it is that we tell the good news to other people, that we share with them what God has done for us. I've said it to you before, and I'll say it again. They can't refute anything that you say when it says, this is what he's done for me. You know, they can argue with you about scripture all they want to, but they can't argue about what he did for you. So that's what you have to share. You have to share from your heart what Jesus did for you. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations or all men. you got to go out and and tell people that you run into about Jesus and what he did for you and what a great savior he is. Speak to people from authority. This is what happened to me. I can tell you because it happened to me. It's the truth. And you can tell them what Jesus did for you. And whenever you do that, folks are going to be convicted by what you say. They may not show it to you in the beginning, but they're going to be convicted by what you say because the word tells us, that God's word doesn't return unto him void, but will accomplish everything he pleases. So you got to remember that. Every chance you get to tell somebody what Jesus did for you, you should take advantage of that and do it. Whether it's on the telephone, whether it's somebody you bump into at the grocery store, whether it's somebody you see wherever, you need to tell them what Jesus did for you. Start with your family, those the closest to you, and tell them what a difference Jesus has made in your life. And then go from there to the city you live in and wherever you are telling people about Jesus. Then, of course, you've got to remember winning them to Christ is the first step, but teaching them about what Jesus has done for them, showing them in the scripture. Once they've accepted Jesus, they can understand what the scripture says a whole lot better because it'll make sense to them then. But it's- it. It goes back to our what we've been talking about too—the convictions yep. that we have. So, if we're convicted about our salvation, when you when you said no one can refute what you say, you, what what God has done for you, right. you're convicted that you have received salvation, right? Yep. Then you're convicted about the word. You know the scripture. When someone wants to find something, you can send them to it or find it and send them to it. And then also the Holy Spirit guiding us. That was week three. Remember conviction to the Holy Spirit, and now to evangelism. What Vince is telling you is when you are, when you are convinced, when you are persuaded, right, then you can share this with people. Now, something I want to share with you, I had a time um, on YouTube where I had a young lady who was reaching out to me or through social media. I can't remember which one, but she was struggling because there was a family member that she kept trying to bring to the Lord. I mean, she kept trying and she would write me, I've done this. And she said this, I've done this. And she said this, and it was really, really taking a toll on this person. And so I said to her, okay, I want to remind you of something. You can't bring them to salvation. You can introduce them to salvation, but they do with what you tell them. Like they, they take the news and they process it in their own way. And if it's, if it's the time for the Holy Spirit to speak to them, if it's, if it is, um, 
if it's speaking to their heart in the way that it makes sense. Remember, we talked about it being folly last week. We talked about, you know, unbelievers that the that the gospel basically is just folly. You you can't take it. How do I like I remember saying to her, you have said everything you should say. Now you gotta let the Holy Spirit take over. Yeah. You know? It, it's not well, okay, think about it like this, okay? It's like planting a seed, okay? You have an opportunity to plant a seed in somebody's life, but you not, may not be there to water that seed, to put heat on it through sunshine, mm-hmm. all the things that has to happen for that seed to germinate and to grow. It's your responsibility to plant it, you know? Um, I even told this lady, which I... It went on for weeks with her. She was really stressed out about it. And I even said to her one time, you might not be the one God has called to water that seed. You might be the one God, God called to plant it. Right. You may not be, and that's that's using that terminology. Let's put it like this. You might not be the one God has called to mentor them. You might not be the one God has called to pray with them um, a prayer of salvation. You, you may not be the one called to that. You might be, and you'll be guided by the Holy Spirit. If that's, you know, I believe that God will guide you into all of that, but you may just be the one that's supposed to demonstrate God to somebody. Mm. You know, you, you may not, you may not be the one you could be. There have been times in my life. I remember, um, I used to sing a lot. I used to sing a lot. And, um, I remember saying one time before I sang that, I never knew if songs that I sang touched people, but I'm not a person who sings to be heard. Like I sing because I believe what I'm singing and, it, and it's worship for me. And I remember in that conversation saying that, you know, you never know if you're touching people, but I know this, the the songs mean something to me. The worship means something to me. And after church that day, a lady walked up to me and she said, I just want you to know that every time you sing, it touches my heart and it touches me. And if no one, if, if you've never been told this, I want you to know that it, it means something to me. And, that for for someone like me that felt like god was giving me some encouragement to know that i am doing the right thing with what he's given me to do right it's, it gave me encouragement to know that no i'm not standing up there preaching i'm not standing there doing invitations i'm not you know on my knees praying with somebody every second for salvation but what i am doing is planting a seed and it may not be like i said you may not be the one god has to bring somebody to him, but you might, you, you are the one that God has to show his love to everyone, right? Was it St. Francis Assisi? And you guys can correct me if I'm wrong. And that's my Southern accent. Wasn't he the one who said, show God, and this is paraphrase, show God in every way. And when, when necessary, use words. It was yeah. something to that effect. I, I'm not, I didn't look it up. I should have looked it up, but that's how it is with us, you know? Well, the perfect example of that in the scripture of planting a seed and not necessarily getting to see it come to fruition is Stephen. Mm. You know, you think about the story of Stephen. If you don't know the story of Stephen, you can find it in Acts chapter six, seven, and eight. Stephen was a young man that the Bible describes as a person that was full of faith in the Holy Spirit, somebody that was on fire for God and that loved God. He's actually known as the first Christian martyr. In other words, he was the first person that the Bible records giving his life for his faith. Um, And I don't want to get into the whole big story because it'll take too long to tell it to you, but basically Stephen was brought before all the religious leaders and he basically just ripped them. I mean, he quoted scripture and told them what all they had done wrong over the years, way back for generations at how they had rejected God at every turn. And at some point in time, the people get so mad at Stephen that they decide to stone Stephen to death for the words that he shared with them. And the Bible says in Acts chapter 7, verse 58, it says, Then they cast him out of the city and stoned him, and the witnesses laid down their garments at the feet of a young man named Saul. Verse 59 says, And as they were stoning Stephen, He called out, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And falling to his knees, he cried out with a a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And when he had said this, he fell asleep or he passed away. So the important thing for you to see out of that is 
the fact that they were stoning Stephen to death, and I'm talking about throwing big rocks at him, trying to kill him, he called out to Jesus and said to them the same thing Jesus said on the cross to the Father. Don't hold this against them. And Paul, or Saul at that time, was standing there watching this take place because the witnesses laid their feet at his garment, his garments at his feet, or their garments at his feet. Think about what kind of impact it must have had on Saul's life to see this young man who's being stoned to death giving God the glory and asking God to forgive them for what they were doing to him. What a huge testimony it must be. And it's not long after that event took place that Paul had his or Saul had his encounter with Jesus on the road to Damascus where he got his new name. He went from being Saul, the one that tortured and tormented and killed Christians, to being Paul, one of the greatest authors in the New Testament a man that was so close and so consumed by God. I mean, that witness of Stephen, you'll never convince me, didn't have an impact in the life of Saul and helped to change him and prepare him for what was going to happen to him just a short time later as he journeyed toward Damascus. And you see, that's such a good picture because you see what Stephen's journey was and what God had for Stephen. And it wasn't for Stephen to live the life of Paul, right? Stephen's life was exactly what he did. And so that's another thing. But we say this, I've said this, but other things, what God has for you, God has for you. And it's the same in your walk. But you have to be mindful. You have to be open. Let the Holy Spirit tell you, hey, it's time to speak. It's time to act. It's time to walk. It's time to talk. Um, That's the evangelism part. If you go back to Matthew, he said, teaching them to observe all things that I have taught you and lo, I am with you always, Mm -hmm. even to the ends of the earth. That's the comforter. No matter what you're going through and and what you're trying to share with somebody, he's right there with you. He's going to give you the words to say. He's going to help you communicate his love to that person if you're just willing to be used. So many times we're more afraid we're going to say something wrong. (laughs) Guess what? You're going to say stuff wrong. I mean, I would think 99% of the time that's why we're afraid to witness. You're going to say something wrong. or you're not going to know something by heart or you're going to quote something maybe partially. Maybe you're going to do it the may style like I do. You're going to paraphrase stuff like, and that's okay. You know, there's one, I'll tell you something about Vince. Y'all love Vince, right? I know y'all do. I hear it all the time. <laughs> um, Vince has a worship leader more times than not. When he gets up on Sunday morning, he is so gut level honest. Like he'll say something like from the pulpit, he'll say, has anybody else had a bad week? And everybody's like, yes, or whatever. Not everybody is, but, and Vince didn't mind. Now I, I'm this person where I'm like, maybe you shouldn't share about, but he's like, it is, this is who I am. I'm living in this world. God is living, you know, is, is Jesus is in my heart living through me, but sometimes I have bad weeks and I'm going to be real about it. And more people relate with Vince over his being real than if he just stood up there and said all these great, wonderful, flowerful things. Not that he says terrible things, but he talks about how God brings him through bad weeks, yeah. you know, and I mean, people and, like that. And right now is a perfect time mm-hmm. to tell people about it because we're all in a mess. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're all sitting at the house most of the time. We we can't go to church. We can't go hang out with our friends. We can't go out to eat. I mean, there's just so many things that are kicking us and beating us down. It's easy to have a bad week. You know, I'm, um, we keep talking about how we'll look back on this and see what God has done. Somebody, was it, who was it? The pastor from First Baptist, was it him this week, First Baptist Tuscaloosa, that said that you should write down the blessings you're seeing God oh, do? Yeah. And I went, whoa. And one of them that I'm seeing is I'm enjoying how much people on social media are turning back to God. Mm-hmm. Like in my feed, it's so funny. I usually am having to like block people for bad things, but so many people are bringing scripture to my mind and posting scripture and posting good things. Like this week in particular is, is um, the one that Trump is talking about is supposed to be the worst week we're going to go through or one of the, one of the two worst. And something that was posted, which is absolutely beautiful is this. Yeah. It's going to be a rough week for us. It was a rough week for Jesus too. And look what he <laughs> did, right? Yeah. How encouraging that, Today, the Sunday you're watching this, we celebrate our risen 
Savior. That's right. How encouraging is that? And how encouraging is it to turn on your television and Facebook and have pastors talking to you about Scripture and God and what He means to all of us? And I think it's amazing. And if that, if if the nation turns back to God, there you go. Well, and I've seen this posted several times too. The 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 church is is empty, but the church building is empty. But actually, we're the church. We're the church. And so everywhere we go, we're the church. So it's important for us to not forget who we are in Christ. What was it? Somebody posted the church is not um, the church is not empty. We're just deployed. Something. Like Something. That, like, yeah. I don't know if that's the right way to put it, but look. It's true. I'm I'm grateful for what God's doing. He is always He is always doing um, amazing things in our lives and and around us. We're seeing amazing things happen. And today, as you celebrate Easter, and I hope you get to celebrate in some way. I told Vince, look, I wish we would just change, just do it next month. <laughs> you know, just celebrate it next month. It, yeah. And um and we may do that. We may have but a big know, family we, Easter party. We can celebrate. We should celebrate Easter every, every day. day. Every day. I mean, because every day Jesus is alive. Yep. And you know, we recognize this time of the year that, you know, just this Friday represents the day that he died on the cross. And then Sunday morning represents the resurrection of a living, loving Savior. Mm -hmm. And it's so important that we don't forget who he is and what he's done for us and how he cares for us and how much he loves us no matter what we're going through. And we can live in that refreshing. Today, we can live in that. We can know. Um, we have we have a risen Savior. I Amen. love it. I hope y'all are enjoying um, this series. We're, we're still in the, we're not even to the middle. <laughs> we're, we're on point four. And I think we had 10 at least so far. Something like that. We'll get there. They're really good. But today, find a way to share Jesus and where needed, use words right? When necessary, use words. Use scripture. Make a post on your page. Just something to let people know that today you celebrate Jesus. You know, it's plant that little seed. You never know who might be out there questioning or having thoughts and not knowing who to reach out to. And you might just be that person that they feel comfortable talking to. Like you may be the person they go, you know what? I feel like I could talk to them about this. And think about it this way too. And that I guess God just gave this to me. But think about this. You plant seeds everywhere you go. You may not ever see that person come up. But you know what? You might be the one that gets to share with someone else that somebody else planted the seed with. And they might get saved because you brought it back to their mind. Mm -hmm. And you spoke to them about salvation. So... Just because you plant the seed doesn't mean they, they're going to get saved right that moment. But somebody else planted a seed and you might have the opportunity to harvest that soul for the kingdom's sake. So don't forget. Don't forget to tell people about Jesus. That's right. So we're going to close in prayer today. And I'm so grateful for this opportunity every week to be able to come to you like this and just talk about the word and what God means to us. And today, such a, cel a celebratory day for us. And I'm so grateful that Jesus went to the cross to save me. Even, even knowing what I was going to be like, he still did it. Still knowing, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm grateful. You want to pray this week or me? Sure, I will. We're going to let Vince close us in prayer. Let's pray. Hey, God, thanks for this day. I thank you for the resurrection. I thank you for Jesus. I thank you for you being willing to, to sacrifice your only son that my relationship with you could be restored and not just mine, but everybody that's watching today, everybody in the whole world. God, I just pray that they'll, that they'll look for you today and God, they'll recognize what a tremendous, unbelievable, sacrificial love you have for each one of us. And God help us to cling to that as we go through these tough times. God help us to trust you, help us to rely on you. Help us to know, God, that you're working everything out and that you're in control and you're taking care of it. Help us to trust you. I thank you, God, for answered prayers. I thank you for every person that's listening today that might have been praying for my dad at some point in time or praying for my mama. Thank you, God, for them and for those that have sacrificed to themselves to spend time praying for my parents. I thank you for them. God, I pray that you would just 
pour your love out on the people that are watching today. God, help them to see that you love them so much, that you care for them so much, that you gave your son for them. God, help them to understand they need to accept that free gift from you, God, so they can have salvation, so they can spend eternity with you. God, help us to not worry about the things of this world, but to focus only on the things that are eternal. And God, if we'll keep our eyes on those things, it'll help us get through this trivial stuff that we have to deal with in this world. God, you're an awesome God, and you proved your love for us through your son Jesus when you sacrificed him on the cross for us. For without the shedding of his blood, there would be no remission for our sin. So God, help us to trust you. Help us to know, God, that as we plant seeds, someone else may get to water that seed. Help us to keep on planting. And God, at some point in time, we may be lucky enough to help reap the harvest of a seed someone else planted. Or we might even get to reap the one we planted. But God, help us to never give up, to never grow weary, to never grow faint and tired of doing the right thing. Help us to love you. Help us to trust you. Build our faith, God. Let your Holy Spirit work in me. God, help me to sacrifice and to to set aside the things that I want and to focus my attention on what you want. Help me to not be selfish. Help me to not um, be greedy. Help me to not do any of the things that this world tries to get us to do. God, help me just to trust you and help me to love you more and to live for you more and to allow the Holy Spirit to work in my life everywhere I go. God, help me to surrender and allow him to work in me. I thank you, God, for this time that we could share with all of our friends and our family that are watching today. God, help them to celebrate your resurrection. God, nothing would be hap- make me happier or make you happier for them to give their heart and their life to you today as you gave your son's life for us. Lord, we praise you and we thank you. We trust you. We love you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Happy Easter, guys. It's been fun spending time with you today, even though it's not actually Easter for us, but it's been fun spending time uh, discussing this with you guys. And we hope you have a blessed Sunday. And until next week, happy Easter. Bye, y'all. Bye, y'all. We love you. Mm